Hello and welcome to Chapter 22, Managing Our Waste. So as the title indicates, Chapter 22 is basically going to be about how do we handle the amount of, uh, of waste and the different types of waste. Okay, so let's take a look at three types of waste and some options. So first here we have municipal solid waste. That's basically non-liquid waste that comes from, say, a house or a small business, etc. Next, we have industrial solid waste, which is basically, say, waste from production of consumer goods, mining, etc. And then uh, thirdly, we have hazardous waste, waste excuse me, which is basically solid or liquid waste that is toxic, reactive, flammable, or corrosive. So uh, when we're looking at options, there are the uh, normal options such as just recycling certain things or composting certain things in order to uh, reduce landfills or just making sure that you uh, dispose of waste safely and effectively instead of just tossing it, say, on the ground. Okay, so let's take a look at landfills. So uh, when most of you think landfills, I'm sure you probably think of just giant heaps of trash uh, with bugs and birds crawling all over it. And uh, unfortunately, while that is still uh, prevalent in a lot of third world countries and undeveloped nations, um, in developed countries such as the U.S., we have things known as sanitary landfills, which have been mandated by the RCRA. Basically, the difference is um, in these uh, sanitary landfills, there are things such as clay liners, which go there, which basically prevent leachate, which is garbage juice, which is kind of gross, but that's what leachate is, garbage juice. Uh, and so the liner prevents that leachate from contaminating the aquifer and the groundwater, which is basically the main problem with uh, unsanitary landfills. Moreover, uh, these uh, sanitary landfills collect that leachate and they treat it so that at any point it won't be uh, contaminating any groundwater. Also, um, since uh, all of the trash is uh, decomposing and breaking down, there is a lot of uh, released methane coming off of that. So in order to avoid a giant explosion, um, most sanitary landfills also have a means of extracting that methane and uh, disposing of it in a safe manner. Also, uh, an interesting thing to think about in landfills is that a lot of times you might be going to, say, a park or even a concert venue, uh, those exist as well, where um, landfills once were. So basically, once a landfill's full, um, they bury the entire landfill, so all the trash is under, and uh, you can build a park on top, you can build anything, you can just um, build on top of that landfill and reuse that space, which is kind of cool. Okay, so now let's just take a look at uh, recycling, composting, and some incentives. So basically, this is the uh, generic recycle sign. So reduce, reuse, and recycle. It is actually very important to recycle in order to uh, minimize the amount of excess uh, trash in these landfills, while it's also environment environmentally friendly because we can reuse a lot of these plastics and things. Um, in the same sense, composting is important because we can use that to help agriculture instead of just throwing it away and not using it. Um, also, financial incentives uh, in the case of, say, corporations or other things are also uh, helpful. So, say, you can give a financial incentive to people for recycling instead of throwing something away. That tends to be helpful in most cases. Okay, so now moving away from that municipal solid waste, we have industrial solid waste. So think of industrial solid waste as uh, waste coming from industry. So in that regard, uh, if you consider regulations, regulations hold people accountable. So say you have a corporation, you put a regulation on them, that corporation is much more likely to follow certain uh, rules and restrictions. Okay, so let's take a look at industrial ecology. So basically, industrial ecology seeks to redesign indu industrial systems to reduce resource impacts and maximize both physical and economic efficiencies. For example, there's something known as a life cycle analysis, and that's basically um, what uh, industrial ecologists use to track a product from its raw materials to its disposal. Okay, let's take a look at hazardous waste now. So basically, hazardous waste uh, is classified as any waste that is ignitable, corrosive, reactive, or toxic. So uh, there's a pretty wide range in there. So some of these wastes can be agricultural, some could be from households. Like there's a really, really giant uh, range of where these uh, hazardous wastes could come from. Um, and currently, current day in the 21st century, uh, a big hazardous waste is e-waste. So all of our electronic devices that we hold so true and love so much um, are actually very, very hard to get rid of. Um, so say you're throwing away a cell phone. You can't just throw a cell phone in the trash or you can't throw a battery in the trash. They're toxic and they're dangerous. You need to dispose of them properly. 
Um, and so when you don't dispose of things properly, um, areas get contaminated. And when that happens, there's something known as CERCLA or Superfund. And so basically that was passed by Congress saying that the government has a responsibility to clean up these sites uh, in some sort of a timely manner. Okay, so that brings us uh, right into the conclusion here. So yes, we have made great improvements in waste disposal recently, uh, but as our population grows, we're going to need to continually change our system to handle the sheer amount of waste that uh, will continue to uh, grow with our population size. Okay, so in chapter 23, we're going to take a look at minerals and mining. Thank you and see you next time.